Fooled ya. You thought it was going to be another bullshit hipster bike video. Far from it. Welcome to Hack a Week. Seamus inspecting the parts here for me, checking out the coffee, and uh, we're gonna get busy putting a few more seals on today. We got uh, some O-rings to put on, we got the oil lines to put on, and uh, gonna hook up the oil tank. We're gonna mount the oil tank up here somehow, suspend it, and then we're gonna crank this thing over and check out oil flow. Look for some oil flow up here on the top and check uh, any little buildup of pressure that I might get just from the starter cranking it over. It won't be much, but at least it'll show me that the pump is making pressure. Good idea to do all that stuff before you just go fire a bike up. Make sure that the pressure is actually going to be what it needs to be and you've got an oil pump that's working. So we will get started uh, as soon as Seamus is done checking out everything on the bench. Caps on tight. Everything's good. What do you think? Oh, he's got to go take out look at the the backside here. Um, yep, little inventory on the on the parts O rings. All right. Thanks a lot, Seamus. I appreciate it. One more O ring here in the oil gallery. There is a plug right here on the front of the engine. And that leads right into that oil gallery that runs across the engine on the back side of the head. And it also runs down here to the oil filter. Now I use a uh, Zeus tool. This is for Zeus fasteners. That's those things that are on race cars that you just push, turn, a quarter turn, and they pop out. They're spring loaded. Uh, and it's got a nice radius to it that works quite well on that plug. You could probably use a big flat blade screwdriver too, <clears throat> but we just get in there and loosen that up. And we're going to pull that out and see what shape that O-ring's in. I've got a replacement one, so it's just a given that it's going to get replaced, but anyway, there it is. Yeah, that's, uh, that's fairly dried out. So we'll go ahead and pull that off and put the new one on clean this out a little bit in here, make sure there's no debris or anything, take a peek in there with a flashlight, and then we'll put that plug back in. There's the part number of the O-ring that goes in there. Let's take that out of the package, and we'll put it on here. Just pretty much slip it over. There we go. Now let's clean that out with a rag. gonna wad up a paper towel here and stuff it in there. I'm gonna apply a tiny bit of assembly lube to that o-ring just so that it slides in there easier and doesn't bind up at all. Go ahead and put that plug back in and we'll take that spin it all the way back in. And make sure it's good and tight. That should be it. Next up we'll get the oil filter installed. It goes into this housing. I've got the O-ring kit. I picked up uh, a few of these on eBay. Pretty cheap. The big one goes right here on the housing. And we've got another one that goes here on the shaft that holds the uh, hole works in place. I'll slide that one on there. That's going to slide down and go into that slot right there. That takes care of that. So we got the big O-ring in there. We've got the small one here on the holder and we're gonna push that in and you have to give it a little shove and it'll go in the rest of the way. It's a pretty tight fit. The spring goes on next. Then there's a flat steel washer that goes on. That lets the spring push against the washer and the washer pushes against the rubber seal on the oil filter. I'm reusing the oil filter that was on the bike when this engine was torn down. It's it's really clean. It has hardly any use on it and I cleaned it a little more with uh, some parts cleaner. I'll use that for my first initial run um, 
20 or 30 miles maybe of drive time once we get to that point where we're actually running the bike. So now we'll get this up, pushed into place. It can only go one way. There's a tab here that goes into a slot. Get it up there and it's going to turn a little hard because of that O-ring. Make sure we're lined up okay. Go nice and easy. Make sure you're not cross threading anything. You don't want to do that. Should turn easy. You can see the reason for the tab in the slot. It keeps the housing from rotating when you tighten it all up. It doesn't need to be real tight. Um, I'm not going to bother with a torque wrench. I'm just going by feel. That's probably about 15 foot pounds or so. Got to do some stuff on the bottom side of the engine, so I've got to flip it over again. And I'll tell you what, this thing has gained a lot of weight since I started. Holy shit. This is where it gets real critical. <laughs> uh, this is a lot of weight to hang on to and not let fall. And you know what, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna balance it there for a second. Grab a couple 2x4s, put them right there, and instead of taking it all the way down, I'm just going to let it balance on those. I think it'll stay there. Whew. It's a bit precarious, but it's going to be a lot easier to flip back up later. <clears throat> Maybe we'll add one more. Oh, yeah, okay. I trust that better. Whew. On the bottom here, we've got three things to address. The neutral switch gets an O-ring, and then the two oil drain plugs get installed with O-rings. I've got the neutral switch right here, and I never did test this uh, to see if it works okay, so I can just turn on my meter right now, the one that goes beep. And let's see, we'll put it on the beep mode. So right now the ball is not depressed, it's out. And I believe that will be neutral and it should beep. Yep. And then when the ball is pushed in, it goes off. So that tested okay. Now we've got an 18 millimeter by three millimeter O-ring on there. We're going to push that in and there are two flat sections on either side and we'll make sure that the flat sections are this way, this way. And there's a flat on there because there's a little tab that goes right here with a six millimeter bolt that holds it in. One side of it's flat and the rest of it's round. It looks like a washer with one side filed flat. I can't find it. I don't have it anywhere in any of my stuff. So I think what I'll do is just see if I can find a washer and file it flat on one side. There we go, that'll work. It's got a flat on one side. So that'll just go on there like that. We've got a six millimeter bolt to put in there. Let's check the torque on that. Just to make sure it's within the same spec as all the other six millimeter hardware, that's nine foot pounds. There we go. Now we'll get these two drain plugs installed. They get an O-ring on them. There's the part number for the O-ring right there. Let's take one of those out of the package. We'll slide it over the plug and spin that one in. That's a 14 millimeter head on there. I'm going to tighten it up to 10 foot pounds. I haven't looked up a torque spec on it, but that should be plenty tight. And now the other one with a new O ring. Let's tighten that one up. 
What else do we have on the bottom? I think that's it. Both plugs are in. The drain plug on the pan is tight. Neutral switch is in place and that bolt is tightened down. And I think we're ready to lower this back down now. And we got one more of these plugs up on the side of the engine to put on. Okay, here we go. I'll do this without letting everything come crashing down. Oh boy, that's heavy. Ah, okay. One more oil gallery plug right here on the side. Let's put that on. I have seen some oil pressure gauges mounted right here on some CB750s. Okay. Next up we have the lines that go to the oil tank and they're right here. They have a 15 millimeter o-ring on them. Uh, I used the ones that I bought at the hardware store a couple weeks ago. They were only 45 cents a piece instead of three to eight dollars a piece from Honda. I tested these out in a little tin uh, cup of oil for the last couple of weeks. Nothing happened to them. So I'm confident that they're just fine to use. These are pretty obvious where they go. Uh, they can only go one way. That one goes right there. We'll make sure there's nothing in the seat. Everything's nice and clean. Let's push that into place. I had to modify my mount a little bit here so that that would clear properly. So that one goes right there. These get two 6 by 25 millimeter bolts with a washer, a flat washer. Tighten those to nine foot pounds. Now the other one goes right there. And this one is a bit unique in that it gets a special bolt for some reason. Uh, on the parts breakdown, it called for this. Let's see, it's, uh, it's this part number right here. And what makes it unique is it has a washer built onto it. I'm not sure why Honda spec'd it that way, but if that's what they show in the parts breakdown, well, that's the way I'm gonna install it. That special bolt goes right there. Goes on the aft hole on that one. And then the other one just gets another six by 25 millimeter bolt. Nine foot pounds on these as well. Okay. Well, we're ready to mount up the oil tank. There's two lines that go to the tank. You can't really mix them up because they're different size fittings. The one here in the back is the oil that returns from the engine, goes into the tank, and it's under pressure as it comes back. It's getting uh, pumped by the oil pump, by the scavenge pump. And then this one here, it's coming back out and going back through the engine, through the entire lubricating system, and then it comes back this way. These, as far as I can tell, have no seals on them. This fitting just goes on there and tightens up. And I guess I'll find out soon enough if that's really the case, uh, because I'm going to put this on and mount it up here, maybe hang it from the bench here with some wires or something so I can fill it up with oil, and then we can crank this over and check for any leaks and make sure it makes pressure and all that. But uh, I couldn't see anything in the Honda manual or did some searching online. As far as I can tell, there's no seal right there. This had been powder coated, so I lightly passed a file over the bottom of these to make sure that they were nice and flat. No weird uh, lumps or bumps. So we'll get this mounted up now and uh, get some oil in it. I'm going to put a little bit of anti-seize on these fittings before I put the lines on. Just a little bit of that uh, aluminum-based anti-seize lubricant. I've done this on Porsche 911 fuel lines. It makes them a little easier to take off later. And we'll just make sure there's none on that sealing surface. Go ahead and get this up here and spin these fittings on. These are both 27 millimeter fittings. I don't have a wrench that big, so I'll just get out the big old crescent wrench here. We'll tighten these up. Let's 
should be good. Now I just need to figure out how to make that stay up in the air. Well, that wasn't too difficult. Just a upright here of some two by fours. And I'll just run a screw in here. There we go. Tank ready to fill up. On the back of the oil tank, there's a couple of lines as well. This one here is the vent line to the atmosphere. Uh, this goes to the oil and air separator inside. This line here, there's a tube that's welded to this internally. It runs down like this and then runs out. This goes back to the crankcase and that would be right there, that nipple. So I could go ahead and connect that right there and what that does is allows any oil that might get up into that air separator to run back into the system and uh, not be leaking out all over the back tire. Not a good idea. So if you've got a built up CB750 and there's an oil leak around that area, take a look at that hose. That needs to be intact and connected to the crankcase. Let's get some oil in this tank. Manual calls for three quarts. We're going to dump in probably just a couple of quarts and see where things are at that point because some of that three quarts will stay in the engine in the oil galleries all the time. I'm putting a 10W30 in here by the way mostly because it's good quality oil that was on sale. <laughs> Let's see if that even shows up on the dipstick yet. Yeah, it shows almost to the full mark, so you've got to figure that a quart is going to circulate through here and there's going to be some hanging out down in the bottom. So we've got enough in there to crank it over and get some oil circulating through the system. So I've got the uh, 12 volt battery right over there out of my uh, Honda Element. Stole that for a, a little bit of time here. I really need the cranking amp, so I can't do it with the battery charger. It only puts out 10 amps and it won't even crank it over. I gave it a try. So we've got the oil pressure gauge mounted up right here where the oil pressure switch would go. I've got the positive cable connected. All I need to do is touch this to ground and this will crank over. Let's, uh, let's do just that. Check the oil level again. See if we're actually getting some oil down in there. Yes, indeed we are. It's, it's dropped a little bit. Let's crank it some more. Needle's moving. I got six PSI there. Let's look at the top end. See if any oil's coming out of the little oiler holes yet. Not quite. Okay, I'm gonna watch up here now and see what we get. Yes, I've got oil coming out of the little holes up here on uh, both of the rocker arms. So there's oil getting to the top end. And uh, well, let's see, what was the pressure getting up to there? Well, it's going well above 10 PSI. This is just a, a little fuel pressure gauge. Uh, doesn't go very high at all. I've got another one over there I could check it with, but the fact that the pressure is going up and I'm seeing oil up here tells me everything's good. I've got oil flowing through the system. Well, we've certainly come a long ways, haven't we? Started out with a pile of parts and we've got an engine that cranks over now and makes oil pressure awesome. Now I've just got to clean up this valve cover, get it cleaned up, polished up, and that can go on. Put all the plugs in there for the adjusters and all that stuff. And then, what else is there? We got an ignition system we need to install at some point, but the main next thing will be the carburetors get on the carburetors and start figuring out what's up with those. I've got, it looks like, two sets of carburetors and all the hardware that goes with them, all replated by the way. That's pretty cool. So when I'm all done, I'll have a spare set of carburetors to either 
sell or hang on to. Either way, pretty cool to have two sets. So, uh, let's see. I guess that'll wrap it up for today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support with the donations. Really appreciate that. And until next time. <laughs> Fooled you. You thought it was going to be another... <clears throat> Ha! <laughs> You're not supposed to swallow coffee backward.